Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for Infrastructure if he'll make a statement on the collapse of the airline flyby? I want the Minister for Infrastructure to reply. Mr. Speaker, I am happy to make a brief statement, though I will concentrate more on what we are doing going forward than about the collapse of Fly B. I hope that this is what honourable members want, wish to hear. Yeah. The island is not responsible for the loss of Fly B services. Fly B has served us well for many years, and its collapse is, is sad for its staff and its customers. Flybee's core Manx routes to and from Liverpool, Manchester and Birmingham were successful. Liverpool operation benefited from the regular movement of patients and attending medical appointments. The Manchester route was reported in the media to be the eighth best performing route on the Flybee network. Birmingham was regularly a busy route and Flybee officers reported to us that the yield remained sound. Flybe had survived a dip that led to the sale of the company to new investors and trading problems that led to UK government support. However, concerns in the industry over the effect of coronavirus on travel margins and about the airline's ability to keep trading led to it entering administration on Thursday, the 5th of March. I can tell you that my officers and I have been working night and day since then to find a new operator for these routes. As a result, I am pleased to announce that, as, that from, Friday this, sorry, from Thursday this week, Logan Air will operate twice, a twice-daily scheduled service to Liverpool. This service will operate seven days a week. This is an interim solution while negotiations continue about the future of these routes. Logan Air already operates from the island to Edinburgh and operates the London City route for BA. I have put... Liverpool top of the list of destinations, even though EasyJet also operate the route because of the needs of the patient transfer service. I know that lots of people have been affected by Flybead's collapse and that many people have lost out on trips and are having to make alternative arrangements. Despite this, I think we need to put the needs of those travelling to and from medical appointments first. That means we have pre-booked seats each day for patients who will be contacted by the patient transfer team with information about their appointments. The remaining tickets will be available on, Logan Air, on the Logan Air website. I realise that many people rely on the Manchester and Birmingham routes. I am pleased to say a number of airlines are interested in these routes. However, this is a nervous time in the aviation industry and having met the chairman of one airline myself this weekend I can tell you there is a real fear the coronavirus or more properly the fear of coronavirus will destroy airlines and their routes. Whilst I would have been normally very bullish, uh, bullish about, the, about the ability of our busy routes to attract a new operator the industry fear of coronavirus means that I'm simply optimistic. I know that many of us need to travel and many of us need to travel regularly. I don't think we're afraid of travelling to the UK, so I can tell you that my department is working with airlines and that we, we will make an announcement as soon as something is agreed. I'm very hopeful that this will be in the next week or so. Yeah. So, yeah. question, Mr Collister. Yeah, thank you, um, Mr Speaker, and I thank um, the Minister for his positive statement today, especially on the, on the Liverpool route. Can I ask the Minister, has he got any timescale of when the Birmingham and the Manchester routes may be back up and running again because they are so key to the Isle of Man. It's worth mentioning that our friends in Jersey, Blue, um, Blue Island um, Airlines stepped in within two days to secure two routes and Logan S stepped in within 24 hours, 48 hours to secure another route into the Channel Islands. So when will we get the Birmingham and Manchester routes back online? Minister to reply. Thank you. Um, as, as I have mentioned, that we are in uh, very good discussions. Um, they are at uh, an advanced stage um, and with a number of airlines, and I hope to make an announcement in the next week or so. Thank you. Further supplementary, Mr Colster. Yeah, thank you, um, Mr Speaker. I fully understand that um, airline yield, how it works in respect of less seats, higher cost, etc., but with so, many, so few seats available on Gatwick and Liverpool at the moment in the short term, can I ask the Minister what discussions he and his department have had with EasyJet to look at the yield prices, especially during this difficult period? 
Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr. Sp uh, Mr. Speaker. My officers are talking to a number of airlines, um, but obviously at this point, all those discussions are confidential. But we are, I, I can I can assure the, this house that we are working um, day and night on all of these these issues, and we are well aware of the the the, the, the impact that this has happened. The voluntary question, Mr. Hooper. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'd like to thank the Minister for his uh, very positive news about the Liverpool routes. One thing he didn't really talk about in his statement was the potential human impact of uh, the changes to flights. There's a significantly reduced number of flights now coming out of the airport. Is he able to comment on any potential impact this is going to have on staff at the airport, specifically any of those staff who are on zero hours contracts? Minister. Um, thank you. I don't have that information about zero hour contracts, but I will come back to the member on that. Supplementary question, Ms. Edge. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, just wonder if the Minister could confirm um, what times the flights will be that is secured with Logan Air. <coughs> Minister. Thank you. Um, as far as we will operate two operations, uh, and, and this will then hopefully go up to a third, um, firstly in the morning and then coming back later on in the evening. I don't have exact times, but in the morning and in the evening. Supplementary question, Mr. Robert Shaw. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And <coughs> other members in, in expressing uh, pleasure in, in the efforts that his department, the Minister's department, are putting in at the present time, but just reflecting on the comment made by one of the airlines in discussion with him at the moment, with uh, having expressed concerns about the impact of starting up with coronavirus, uh, as it were, in front of us. Um, could, could the Minister assure me that the Council of Ministers are very, very well aware of the perfect storm that hoteliers in my constituency currently are subject to in the sense that they've got the problems with the promenade, they've got concerns of slowdown in bookings as a result of coronavirus and the impact of the loss of flyby. On top of that, they also have a <coughs> slowdown in deposit taking going forward because of the very uncertainty that the Minister has Question. spoken to. Could he, could he please reassure me that the council ministers are extremely aware of the sensitivity in this area? Minister to reply. Thank you. <coughs> and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn that the council ministers are already um, meeting around these subjects and have, have, have this at the heart, utmost, utmost urgency. Mr. Collister. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I just ask the minister if he still has confidence in the island's open sky policy? Minister to reply. Thank you. With all, all, all events, um, we always need to reflect and review. I, I'm, at this point, we're looking about um, restoring routes. What I would, would I would sort of just comment on, um, particularly about the open skies. Had we been in a open, open skies or um, rather closed skies, is around protecting the incumbent. And the problem with that, that say we had protected the. The, the skies around the northwest with Fly B, we wouldn't have had alternatives, and we would have taken perhaps six months to to actually achieve an alternative. So therefore, uh, making the situation much much worse. So um, I think there's always an opportunity to reflect on things, but um, uh, you know I just wanted to make the, the House aware of the, of the significant problems that can cause. Final supplementary, Miss Castain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and again, I congratulate the Minister on moving quickly and trying to get this resolved. Uh, but could he, there was obviously a contingency plan in place prior to the collapse of Flybe. Could he tell uh, the House whether the coronavirus and any other events have affected the contingency plan, or is he merely just now carrying out the contingency plan as it already was? Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. We are ready and waiting and, and looking at, at, at alternatives. Um, you know, should certain things rise, and that seems to become clear. However, unfortunately, coronavirus has had a massive impact on confidence, or rather, the fear of coronavirus, not necessarily the virus itself, but the fear of it, has had has that confidence had, has made those um, conversations much, much more difficult because abilities not wishing to invest in in those sort of scenarios. Thank you.